Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we begin with an introduction to the Deneb rocket. This is our new rocket which will hopefully finally get us a success on our lunar orbiter contract that we have had lingering for a little bit. And it makes use of the Viking engines that we have to unlock. They're very expensive to unlock but um, the, the number that is displayed is never the right number so it's really hard to tell sometimes. Uh, anyway, hopefully uh, it won't be too bad. We have 298,000 and it's probably going to take a chunk of it though, especially since we have to tool a whole bunch of things because this rocket is no longer a 2.04 meter rocket. This is a 3 meter rocket and boy would I love to use the LR-87s and the LR-91s, you know, the engines for Titan. Of course, this is basically a wannabe Titan rocket. And I would like to use the Titan engines, but we're not going to. That's part of the added difficulty of being the European Space Agency. In this case, I will stick to that. And so we're using the Viking engines, which are not quite so good. And we are going to deal with it. Uh, so we've got the Viking 2 option here. And it's going to take 80,000 to purchase, it says. And uh, we've got a rate of burn time of uh, 2 minutes and 25 seconds. We're using 1 minute and 55 seconds of that right now. But you notice there's a single core thing and the Ariana is a triple core thing. This will ultimately also be a triple core thing. And when it's a triple core thing, the core will get an extension tank. And actually, I would expect that to be exactly this second stage tank. And that extension tank will increase the duration of the core while the boosters remain uh, somewhat shorter. Uh, so that is the plan. Uh, I decided to stick with the Viking 2 because the other options weren't quite as good. Uh, we have uh, less thrust on this one. We really don't need less thrust right now. This one has more thrust but less ISP in vacuum. Uh, it's an option but I decided to go with the one that had better ISP in vacuum. Uh, though this one has longer burn time, we don't really need the longer burn time. Uh, we have the thrust weight ratio we have right now, and if we tried to push the burn time any longer with this core, uh, we would have a really low thrust weight ratio. So we don't really want the extra burn time right now. And then this one is vacuum optimized. Speaking of vacuum optimized, uh, we have that here. Uh, so. This is the Viking 4C configuration that we see at the bottom, which has a 292 vacuum ISP. And curiously, uh, the this one has the same thing. It has the 4C configuration, and that is the best vacuum cons configuration that it has. And it seems to be unlocked already. I mean, uh, it's possible for use, but this is a bigger model and I would have to unlock it separately, I think. Uh, because this here, the Viking, says 80,000 and this says 95,000. Well, somehow they're going to charge me the extra 15,000, right? I guess. Right? I mean, otherwise they wouldn't be different prices. I don't know. So, with that uncertainty, I decided not to put that engine on here and just use the same engine that we're going to unlock anyway. And it's there. Uh, if it turns out that that ends up being free once we unlock this, then all's the better and we'll use that model instead. But for now, we'll just use this one. And of course, we've got monumental tooling involved, right? Because three meter tanks and then the different probe cores. We've got a 180 ton capable probe core here. We've got a 60 ton capable probe core there. And then we've got uh, this is actually our usual Gamma 2 stage, so that's normal, and hopefully that... Well, actually, we have to extend that core to 15 tons, so that's also new, but it's closer to something we already have. But yeah, that's sort of new. And then after that, it's our probe that we're used to, including the Air B engine, the AJ-1027, and then we saw before the KDU-414 and the little other guys, those guys. Uh, so we've got all that business as before, but and this stage, which is a little bit different, a little bit extended. Um, that's uh, the reason we're going for 15 ton core there is because we expect to be launching heavier payloads with this as well, right? So that's why. Uh, potentially three tons to orbit is what I'm aiming for. 
So we're going to have to tool things and unlock things, but this gives us about 800 meters per second more than we had before, which would be good. And let's just sort this all out and see how much it's really going to cost. Okay, so I'm committed to this design. Uh, we've got some a new payload fairings because they're bigger. And again, hopefully that won't impinge on the solar panel. I mean, I'm wondering about the solar panel degradation. I have no idea what's causing it. Uh, hope, uh, one theory from Pekka was that it was the payload fairings. Uh, this fits very nicely into the payload fairing intended capacity, so uh, hopefully that'll be okay. And then uh, those are at the top, and then we have got a bunch of other fairings to tool along the way down here and hopefully we'll get a discount on some of that and then the tanks so and then the avionics so tool that purchase all toolings okay now we're down to 221,000 and then we have to unlock the engine uh, mainly the Viking engine so let's see uh, let us uh, oh yes um, let's do the pad I suppose before we unlock the engines so upgrading the pads resources Wow, that's gonna cost a lot. Sixteen thousand. How much for human rated? Ooh. Well, we'll do that later. Okay. Renovate. Okay. Well, that is probably gonna take a while. Let me unlock the Viking two like this. Oh yeah. Well, there goes our budget. Um, and then, so we've got that. It really was 80,000, and so this one doesn't cost any extra, so that's fine. Now, with this, yeah, it still costs the extra 15,000. Now, since we're using the same configuration on here as is on there, there's no point to that. There's no reason for me to unlock that. So I don't know how that's supposed to work out for us. All right. Obviously, we haven't used the Viking engines before, so there's probably going to be failures, etc and we will have to see. Let's wait for those renovations, but we do have our space plane to take care of. Those renovations I gotta take until December? I feel like there's something very different from how this is being done compared to when we added propellants to other launch pads, I'm not sure. But alright, well we're we're in for it now anyway. So to the hangar. This should be ready to go. We have the com online contract. Our Kerbal. Oh, our Kerbal isn't trained yet, it looks like. Okay, let's try it. I'll put a shoot on just in case. Okay, everything appears to be nominal. Oxygen, we might have wanted to top off at some point, but it's okay. Draw a lot. Fly by wire on. And start. Oh, is the rudder on upside down? I think the rudder's on upside down. How did that happen? Okay, we're up. Gears up. Fundamentally, that shouldn't change anything, really. Well, let's see what the jet engines can actually do here. I don't think they got to bring us past the sound barrier, so I'm going to start pitching. Okay, and rocket engine. I'd like to get on the opposite side of the space center to land instead of doing a U-turn, but it's not a problem. Okay, turning off the jets. I mean, surely we're in the right situation now. Yeah, now it's running. 
Boop, boop. Right at the end, we get a little tip off. Okay, so. Oops. 102 kilometers. We're gonna have to tweak a few things if we want to get to 110. Might have to take away Viola's parachute. <laughs> I think we're gonna be far enough past the space center. Orbit! We got orbit velocity. Briefly. Atmospheric autopilot must be so confused. Uh, that looks pretty good to me. Let's get those brakes out. There's a more proper way to go. Well, I guess I can leave the RCS on and try to use it. Not pull up too quickly. I want to limit the G-forces to below the red zone, basically. We could pull fewer Gs. We've got enough altitude left here that I could make that turn with fewer Gs. But then we'd need to run the jets. We could still dump about half the HTP and maybe some of the kerosene. Okay, slowing down. Gear down. I need to turn off the camera wobble. <laughs> I don't need that. Maybe I, uh, maybe less of it. I don't know. Okay, drag shoots. We still seem to deploy unevenly. Okay, whoa, okay, bouncy. Well, oh, well, we're done. <laughs> we decelerated a lot quicker with this than ever before. But, okay, no, just stay parked. Recover vessel. Alright, so Viola is now legitimately a astronaut by any measure. Astronaut wings, above Carmine line, the whole nine yards. Or meters, whatever. Okay, well, that just leaves the last one in here. I mean, unless we want to do this one. This one's optional though, 110. I don't know if I feel like doing 110. <laughs> it's not that interesting and they give no rewards. But that's because it's at 0% of its nominal value. We'll decide that once we see what the rewards could be, because right now it's at zero. I don't know, uh, do they just pay out the remainder? Let's say I finished the program, maybe they should just pay out the remainder as a reward, I don't know. At a minimum, you will need to complete 15 contracts to finish this program. Is that right? It didn't feel like that. These others don't give a contract count. It says 15, but then I don't think we did 15 contracts. I think we did these... I mean, at least two times, so seven. Hmm. Well, as far as science accumulation is concerned, we're going to get entry, descent, and landing so we can do more goo and more film camera things. And then we'll get the early human spaceflight era science. So that will help us out. Um, this, the deadline for this is September of 1991. So we've got a year right now. And we're really not doing anything. We've completed both of these. <laughs> so maybe I should pick up the targeted satellites. Just for the extra slot and money. I mean, surely our rockets now will be good enough to do these things. We can even do fast. Oh yeah, geostationary communication network is requiring it. And uncrewed lunar surface exploration is something I want to do too. 
But then that's pretty much a dead end, right? They don't make us do anything with geostationary satellites after that. I think we'll pick this up as a means to deploy our additional science. Um, the new science that we're going to be unlocking, the orbital perturbation experiments, etc. And we'll just use these to fund those launches because we're going to want to launch those anyway, right? Uh, and get that science. We might as well get paid for it. So I think that's the plan. I'll pick this up after all. And we'll, we'll go fast with it for once. And we'll also aim to do that once we complete the early lunar probes. We'll quickly pick that. Well, we'll do this, quickly pick that up. So we'll try to do this in this year. Get the geostationary communication network. Do that. And then move on to uncrewed lunar surface exploration. I want a whole lot more science before we do the crew orbit. I think we should do something else at ELA-2 though. Maybe we should start working on uh, the targeted satellite stuff. So I'll build that while we're getting the Deneb rocket ready on ELA-4. No, so we'll just do the NAVSAT payload first. We don't have the new experiments yet, so we'll put what we can. Because we sure haven't finished all of these yet. But yeah, this is OP for this purpose. But not OP for the other things that we'll need to do. There's still a zero C though. So we're using the old engines. We'll pretend we had them left over or something. I didn't want to reconfigure this. Okay, aiming to do the NAVSAT contract with our leftover Ariana Zero. And we're going to, uh, we'll go well above a 45 degree inclination. And everything else should be fine, hopefully, maybe. So, throttle up, SAS on, ignition, and launch. All right, looking good. Oh, we lost one of the core engines. That's probably okay-ish, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> maybe. I don't know if it's Gimbling can handle that. I didn't tilt them through the center of mass or anything. Oh, it's pitching down. Okay. Um, fairing set. I don't know if we can abort to orbit, but we're trying. I don't think we have enough though. Okay, continuing to try and get all we can out of this. Okay, go. Yeah, no, it's not gotta be enough. Okay, back to Space Center. I think I'll put this WeatherSat payload along with our NavSat payload. It's only 20 units. Okay, so we have the Deneb rocket under construction at Launch Complex 4, and that is carrying the lunar orbiter. And we have here the WeatherSat payload and the NavSat payload, it said that it wanted 100 units of NAVSAT, we've got that. 20 units of WeatherSat, we've got that. And mainly we want a periapsis above 300 kilometers, uh, inclination above 45 degrees, and then an eccentricity below 0 0.005. So that's a lot of stuff, but if our engines work, that would be great. Uh, we have an Ariane 1 this time, Ariana 1 this time. So Ariana 1 with our Blue Streak engines, the RZ2 Mark 3s, and hopefully they'll all work. <laughs> anyway, ignition. And launch. So we'll go heading 40 to overdo it just a little bit. Okay, booster set.
Okay, separation and ignition and fairings. We don't need all of this stage this time. And we're probably gonna pitch down quite a lot eventually. Comms on this trajectory uh, is a little bit hard. We'll want to pick up that Grand Canary there for the Apoapsis burn. Or fine, maybe Madrid. Madrid will be fine too. Okay, let's cut it there. Alright. And we will see. Okay. All three of these little guys have lit. But we are not pointing prograde. We are not pointing prograde. Okay, it's off. Alright, well we're going to go to our new apoapsis. Or we could uh, bring our orbit down. Could try that. But I don't think... Well, eccentricity is already 0 0.009, so I guess it's not too bad. Um, this one's already checking orbit. So we'll keep it stable for a minute, maybe. 0 0.005 is all we need. We're going towards that station, so we should be alright for the interim. Okay, we've got the NAVSAC contract, and now selling fuel down. This contract. The weather sack contract. Okay, it's fine with that eccentricity. Alright, checking that out. And that's good too. So we got two done. Easy two, the easy two, but they're done. So we'll go ahead. Oh, we need more eccentricity, right. So, um... Oh, right, no ignitions remaining on those. Oops, I should have only ignited one of them. Eh, it doesn't look like we're gonna get to point oh four, I don't think. So, it's here now. We'll get rid of it in the tracking station later if it's, it is deemed necessary. Alright, so I've decided to pick up the communication test satellite contract, which is optional, and that's to carry 138 units of ComSat payload to a middle sort of apoapsis, low periapsis, uh, high inclination, and then it'll check for stable orbit. But I've also picked up the Molnia orbit contract, and this requires a periapsis, a periapsis above 500 kilometers, which is technically compatible with this. High eccentricity, inclination between 61.4 and 65.4, which satisfies that inclination too. Uh, argument of periapsis, well this one didn't specify that, so we could try and figure that out. And then uh, that period, we might have to pull our periapsis down to make that period happen, um, or the eccentricity happen, we'll see. And then it'll check for a stable orbit. And that needs 85 units of ComSat payload. So we've got 138, which is what is required by the heavier one, the ComSat payload contract, this one. And we've uh, made this tank bigger, have increased the avionics here. I tried to get 1.5 tons here, but it wouldn't let me do 1.5 tons. It always went to one. So, I mean, previously I've had the ability to do decimal places, but um, here it has a decimal place. Let me just try again. Sanity check. Uh, no, it just goes to two. So, yeah, we can't do uh, some decimal place amount. And actually, I wanted zero extra tank volume there. Okay, so we've got RCS for it in the tank already. Well, it gave me extra tank volume anyway, I think. But, yeah, we've got the RCS there. And then we have the fuel. I've increased the size of this tank so we get more delta V out of these guys. And so we've got 1,678 there. And I've changed our gamma 2 stage. And I've done that by using the 15 ton core that we already had for the new rocket. We needed a 15 ton core. And I've put three gamma 2s. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to fire two of those Gamma 2s in order to get to orbit, and then fire the third Gamma 2 in order to boost up once we get to the right periapsis location. So then we'll use the rest of the fuel like that, and then we'll see where we get. So that is the plan. If everything else works, we've had to start some pad upgrades because now this requires uh, more propellants for the Gamma 2 stage in particular. So we are waiting on that. We can't use our pad right now. But we are now pushing the limit of the pad, 154 tons. I've also increased this core to 154 tons. And it seemed alright with that. And we are going to build this once the pad is done. Okay, finally we get to our first test launch of the Denim rocket and unfortunately it's at night. At least we can sort of see it a little bit better than the Ariana rocket, uh, so there is that. But we had to line up the moon and everything, and we have, and we will see how it goes. So once again with the lunar orbiter contract, but it does require that the engines actually work. Throttle up, SAS on, ignition. Well that's four of them so far, and go. And far popped up again. Okay, staging. Come on, little engine. All right. And act well. It's a little bit early for fairings, so we'll leave that be. Bars up again. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll just do this along with the Gamma 2 stage as usual. Well, that's our inclination pretty spot on already. I don't think we can do more than that. And staging. Staging. All the fairings. Taking a look at this, that Monia orbit is very specific here. I hope it sort of obeys what it said in the contract and not expect this in particular. Basically this stage is gonna boost us up much more than it does with the Ariana rocket. I mean this rocket isn't that much heavier than the Ariana rocket, right? It's 180 tons versus 150. The difference being this is one core rather than three cores. Well, we should get that little antenna out. And that's the end of the stage. Certainly higher than before. Okay, but we'll use it to orient as we have done. And so it'll have to hang out until the next order. We probably want a little bit more electric charge though. Since it's a 15 ton core, it uses more power. Oh, and we're gonna have to last for longer because we're going, uh, we're in a higher orbit. Oh, we have a plot for the moon. 1,926. And again, in theory, we should be able to expend the AJ-1027 stage. But it always gives us more than we expect, so we will see. Uh, our power situation is just not good. Okay, well, I'll try the thing that we did before. We'll try and point at the node and spin up now. And then decouple this off. Okay. Well, separation. How much force with this one? Okay, well, let's time warp to the node. We are recharging now. Okay, go. I'm activating the avionics now. Solar panels, let's see. 57% wear. 57% wear somehow. It gets worse and worse. This one too. Okay, well, it says 22.3, but that's in an odd direction because we are sort of radial. This is obviously not what we want exactly, but let's see. 
that's what we want. Only 17-ish. And then set. That's serious force right there. Okay, going going with this 49.1 meter per second burn. It's gonna be tight, but we'll see. Okay, go. These only have two ignitions. Well, I'm not seeing anything. <laughs> That's problematic. Um, okay, now I'm seeing something. Touchy. All right. Well, we've got it there. Let's go. Com should be good at periapsis. Oh, it says collect science. I don't know if I can force telemetry, can I? Hmm, I might have made a mistake on this. Well, like, maybe we can. Okay. Well, while that's going. Alright. Ignition. Looks like these guys are good. And we have 800 meters per second total, including the next engine. Okay, captured. Okay, supplementary capture engine. Go. Okay, shut down. That's all we need. Okay, no science gain. Okay, we've got it. We've got it. All right, all right. Well, it's got gotten out of comms. Okay, we've got comms. Let's stop this madness. Okay, so we did the contract finally, that lunar orbiter contract that's given us trouble. This doesn't have any meaningful science on it, so we'll just leave it be. And back to Space Center. So really, I just wanted to make sure we could get this lunar impactor contract again. Let's pick that up. And with that, we'll complete the, the early lunar probes thing. Uh, really, we've already done all the necessary stuff, but... We're sort of killing time since the deadline is September 15th anyway, so we're getting paid. And we'll do more targeted satellite stuff, but we will see. I mean, we've got three of them done, but it's the three harder ones that we've got left. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.